Since winning its independence, the United States has been involved in six major wars, an average of one every 30 years. At any time in the future, this nation may be attacked by an enemy armed with atomic or hydrogen bombs. chronicle of an event that could take place in any target city. It's called Bomb Proof. Practically no sleep at all. I wonder how long we can keep it up. The city continues to claw itself out, and although the full extent of the bomb damage is still being determined, the North Central Manufacturing Area is a scene of complete destruction. We've all got nothing to go back to now. Donovan's plant really got it. It's nothing but a vacant lot, a prairie. That means that everyone in town is out of a job. Say, I, I've got some questions I want to ask him. Mr. Donovan, I'm Fred Bates. I've been working for you and your dad before you for 40 years. I'll be 65 next year. Now that the plant's been blown to kingdom come, what's going to happen to my pension? I own some Donovan stock. What about my savings? I delivered two truckloads of paint to your factory the day before the bomb hit. I didn't even have time to bill it. I got 10 days of back pay coming. What's the matter with you people, Vince? You know, there's a war going on. Our plant has been destroyed, but the company is still in business. In addition to being civil defense headquarters, this happens to be the temporary office of the president of Donovan Manufacturing. Brother! You're going to get your pension. Madam, your investment is safe. You'll be paid for your paint within 90 days. You'll have your job back in less than 90 days. Now, that's a lot of baloney, Donovan. Your factory is nothing but a big radioactive hole in the ground. You're through. I'm through. We're all through. We might as well go live in caves. Charlie, you can just thank God you happen to be wrong. We've got the people to start over again. Our records are still intact. Records? Big deal. Records? What good are records? The factory's gone. The foundation's gone, even. The records are the new foundation. Listen, all of you. I want to tell you something that you don't know. This goes back to three years ago. And something that began one day in my office during an evacuation drill. Here's the evening paper, Mr. Donovan. Thank you. This is one of the best drills we've ever had. Yes. Someday it may save thousands of lives.
What would happen if an H-bomb hit this plant? Complete destruction. It would probably mean the end of Donovan manufacturing. But it wouldn't have to be the end. They could move in new machines. We'd get them from somewhere, along with new stocks of raw materials. In the beginning, we'd have some pretty makeshift arrangements. But with our people saved and filled with the will to win, we could carry on. But one thing is sure. In our line of business, it's almost impossible to build from scratch without records. People and records. We can evacuate people or get them to shelter. But how can we save our records? Yes? Mr. Donovan, you asked me to buzz you when Mr. Stone got back in. Thank you. Yes? Caleb, how about that integrated CD plan? How's it shaping up? It's coming along fine, J.B. I'm working with Lewis Aiken of Civil Defense, our industry representative. As a matter of fact, he's coming over this afternoon. So, we wonder if Civil Defense has any advice on how we can preserve our vital records. We have tons of them. In short, Mr. Aiken, how can we make them bomb-proof? Your first line of defense for your vital records is a plan of office protection, in which employees are taught to act at the earliest alert. Records stored in the company vault will have good protection. Unless your plant happens to be in the inner ring of total destruction. Total destruction? Yes, total destruction. Directly under an H-bomb burst, you could have a hole a mile wide and 175 feet deep. The only sure method of protecting vital records, whether it's company records or just a few personal documents, such as a birth certificate, is to duplicate them and store them at dispersal points safely outside the target area. There are four ways of duplicating your records. You can make handwritten copies, typewritten duplicates, carbon copies, or photocopies. Which do you recommend? It depends on the nature and number of records to be duplicated. J.B., I know our records are important, but it just isn't practical to copy them all. We have at least 300,000 documents. It would cost a fortune to copy them by hand or typewriter. I don't go for these hand or typewriting methods of copying either. Too many chances for errors. How about photocopying? 300,000 photostats and blueprints costing at least a dollar a piece? We just couldn't afford it. Now, just a second, Caleb. When you spoke of photocopies, did you have microfilming in mind? It's one process you'd probably want to consider. Lots of business firms are now using it. So is the government. Microfilming sounds like a good idea, if it doesn't cost too much. Are the machines very expensive? No more so than other office equipment. Western Steel has a microfilm installation here in town. Maybe you could talk to them about it. How about that, Caleb? Want to go over to Western Steel this afternoon? I don't know about this fill business. If you want records to last, they ought to be on permanent rag paper. The National Bureau of Standards considers microfilm just as permanent as rag paper. Well, gentlemen, I must be going. Uh, one more thing. How long does the Bureau of Standards think film will last? They estimate about 500 years. This is our microfilming section. This is a combination recorder and reader. This machine automatically feeds documents of assorted sizes into the recorder. Both sides of each document are being photographed on microfilm as fast as the operator can load the feeder. Now, every one of the documents in this entire file cabinet has been microfilmed. And their microfilm images are stored in a container as small as this 16 millimeter film box. Now this single microfilm file cabinet contains photographic records of every important document in this entire plant. This one film file cabinet is the equivalent of a hundred four drawer files. We always have a microfilm made in duplicate 
and the other set stored at another location for safekeeping. Is it much of a job to find a document when you want it? Not at all. Let's say I want to find a statement issued last month. I turn in the master index file to the statement section for the month of March. And I find that the statement I want is on roll number 62 at index point number 258. I locate roll 62 in this drawer. Just takes a few seconds. Now I'll have the operator show you the items on the reader. She puts the roll in the reader. And she turns the film until the reference number appears on the index meter. And there's your statement. This is remarkable. What if you need a copy of that item? On paper. Miss Matson, would you make us a print of this item? By the way, where do you have the actual roll of film developed? Well, most people send their exposed film to a microfilm developing center. There are many of them strategically located around the country. They process the film and mail it back the day it's received. We have a security problem, so we have our own machine. Can a microfilm copy be used as legal evidence? Well, microfilm images are acceptable in federal courts as primary evidence, and in all courts as secondary evidence. Notice how even the smallest type reproduces with complete legibility. Thank you, Miss Matson. Uh, oh, Miss, uh, how many years' experience have you had with this machine? Oh, I've just been here since last week, sir. John? I'm sold. Now that we've solved the problem of how to duplicate our records, how do we make them bombproof? You can't store them here. This town's an enemy target for sure. It ought to be a protected place 20 or 30 miles or more from town. There's an abandoned coal mine over near Belleville. Yes, and Granite Cave at Jepton. You know, any small town bank vault will do. Microfilm takes very little space. I know just the place. And what did you finally decide on, Mr. Donovan? The First National Bank of Rolling Hollow. Rolling Hollow? Gosh sakes, I was born there. Well, here's your chance to make a trip back home. Maybe we can scrape up enough gasoline to make the trip this afternoon. Fred, here's the container with your pension record in it. The accounts receivable, the insurance policies, the bank statements, the formulas, our machine designs, and our personnel records. And for every name in this microfilm file, there's a man or woman ready to go back to work. We've got every document the company needs to get on its feet again. And we've got the people, too. We can build again. We will build again. <laughs>